Hey, how are y'all doing? So, I got the range here. Now, with this range, so we have the highs, the lows. I, I was kind of thinking it could be up here, like this. Because this, this was technically in the overnight session. But when I put it back down here, you can see it actually reacts pretty well off of it. You know, it comes back in, fades, and then retests it right there. And then it basically acts as a breakout that fails right there as well. So I thought it fit best there. So that's kind of how I played it today. But, um, you know, this leg here, when it bounces there, that's where it forms the overnight highs and lows. We have a couple legs up. We break out. We fade back in. And then this leads to about where I started trading. So... When I started trading, we were fading this range already. I didn't get in. I didn't. I don't, and like, let me talk about this right here. So, because when you do have the overnight highs and, a, and you get a breakout, you're gonna look to fade, right? Except, here's the thing with this entry. This is clearly the best looking entry to fade. Except, it's still not good. I don't think. Even though you have this short term downtrend, you have a break. First attempt lower. Second attempt lower. But you're expecting to reverse, and when you're expecting to reverse, and then the EMA holds twice like that, with higher high, higher low both times, it's like that's just not a good reversal area. Now what I'd like to see is a rush below, and then the exact same pattern. If Even if this pattern looked the same, as long as it happened below the EMA, it would have been cool. Because it'd be like downtrend, rush below the EMA, attempt to get back above, EMA holds it down, Second attempt to get above, EMA holds it down. But this is really just like attempt to get lower, EMA holds the prices up. EMA, a second attempt to get lower, EMA holds prices up again. So it's just, it's not a good, good looking reversal trade. So you can get this bigger downtrend here. We go into this downtrend, we have a break. First attempt at a new low, it does make a new low. And then you can see that there's a little break out of this range here. So I'll, I'll get that drawn here. So we have this little range, breakout of the lows, most breakouts fail, we fade back in. Now I don't think it's worth going along there because it's like you have the downtrend with the break in the new low, but I mean it is, it is very, I mean I can't really say not to take it, but it looks like it has a short term trend line, which it does, but that's not even the only reason, I just... I just feel like I would have avoided it just so early. I mean, the downtrend just played out. I mean, it. I mean, it has a break in a new low, so you know, and it's still a, it's a break out of this range, and it could fail. But it just seems a little bit early, you know, going long that that quickly, especially because they often get two legs down. But with the with the the fact that you have, uh, it looks like it closed in this short term trend line, or maybe it didn't actually. If I zoom in here, um, if it's right off of it. It looks like it kind of closes in, but either way, I just didn't want to go long that soon, so anyway, we push higher, we get two legs back, and then we get that retest I was talking about, two legs up, makes a retest. This right here, I wish I had taken this. Now, about, I want to talk about the EMA, so this trade right here, I think it looks a lot better than uh, any fades up here, so at this point, we're already faded in. We have a break, first attempt lower. This is the second leg to a new low. And we have a first entry short, second entry short. But it's not just that we have a second entry, it's that we have two clear legs. So a leg up, break, second leg. It's not just like a little wick higher, it's clearly two legs that are, you know, relative in size to one another. And it's retesting a major area. So I thought it looked good. I I, I didn't take it because uh because I, I, I just I just kind of saw it a little bit late. Like I had left and then I saw it and I just didn't pull the trigger. I, I think I convinced myself not to take it because, uh, I don't know, just, you know, you know when you're trading, emotions are all over the place. So I should, probably should have entered that. But um, we push lower. It gets a nice trade. Now, so now we have downtrend break, two legs to a new low. And now we start to reverse here. We get this little uptrend doesn't hold for very long we turn down it doesn't even attempt to make a new high for it I mean you can you can see these small attempts here these little wicks higher but that's not much so we go into this downtrend here then we get into this thinner downtrend and we go into this range here and then this leads to my first trade that I finally pulled the trigger on trigger on and so 
Now, the, the, a con about this trade, I would say, is that it already has these two legs down, but this, I mean, it already pulled back enough. This is its own trend right here. This own, it's its own downtrend, which I'm actually going to extend this here. Um, it's its own downtrend. It has a break. First attempt lower, second attempt lower. I was entering on the second attempt to make a new low. It's a break out of this range, which I got that range pretty early. Sometimes it would take me a little bit longer to get these ranges, but... You know, I saw the double top, I saw it was sideways overall, put the lows there, got this breakout, there's an overshoot, if this didn't overshoot I wouldn't have taken it, and since it's so short term I'm okay with it just going straight through the trend line, as long as it has that overshoot, and so I got 9 points on this, I was a little bit caught off guard when I entered because I didn't quite realize how big, the, how big it was, but 18 tick risk isn't bad or anything. I took a way bigger loss than that. Well, not way bigger, but a few. Another point I got uh, over here. Five and a quarter point loss. Stupid trade. I'll go over it in a sec. So anyway, we push lower. We get the fade. Two legs back. Let me draw that just for the visual. First leg back. Second leg back. Breakout. Most breakouts fail. Get the overshoot. Downtrend. Still expecting a new low. We make that new low. The range holds for a little bit longer. We get these two legs up in this good signal bar. I didn't take it. I don't think it's that terrible. It's just, one, I knew how big the risk was, so that made it a little bit harder, and the fact that I could only go for one-to-one. -one. It's just, I, don't know, I didn't like that big of a risk only going for one-to-one. -one, you know what I mean? I just, I just didn't want to enter it. So it doesn't look too bad, though. I mean, you got two legs up. At the overnight, at the uh, key entry point here, just after fading down, we have this bearish bias at this point. So, I think it's probably high probability. It's just not what I would take. So, we push lower. I'm gonna remove that actually. We push lower. We get another leg down. Another. There's a couple ways to see this. At first, I saw these measured legs here as like a first leg down, then a second leg down, which I do think that those are connected with two legs down there. But I was kind of looking at it as downtrend break and then a couple legs to to a new low on a massive picture so right as right as you get the two legs up uptrend break new high but then we fade the range we get a downtrend break couple legs down but that kind of, i feel like that's kind of a stretch i think it's more like two legs down a range and then we just push lower again so um anyway oh whoops we break out of the overnight low so we have the overnight low here we break out we get this leg down let me redraw this. Now this, it looks like it closes in, just the way that the wick reacts to the trend line there. Uh, I didn't want to take it because I was worried about, you know, this bear, extremely bearish move that happened really fast. I was afraid of it making a break in a new low for it. Even though it's you get the two legs down, I was still afraid of, you know, it being so strong that it makes a new low, which it nearly does actually. But um, really, I don't see any good trades here. And then even when we do get this basically higher low I mean really it's because you see how those bodies are higher up than these bodies to me that looks like a break in a new low and then a short-term reversal higher because when I'm when I'm trading on a big picture that I talk about all the time you gotta look at the bodies more the wicks are still important and they're part of the bar and I still put my stop below the whole wick and everything but I mean to me it looks like downtrend there break new low even though technically it wicked lower over here so that's kind of how I see it but anyways that leads us to fade we get a little fade it doesn't well, or, sorry it doesn't last for that long but we go into this uptrend it breaks a couple attempts EMA holds it down then we go into this much larger downtrend here and so after this failed to fade I got this short-term downtrend and this bigger downtrend at the same time coming down here we're waiting on a correction. We finally get this correction. Doesn't reach anything. No way that you can take it. We get another correction. Just one single leg up off the key entry point and EMA. I didn't think that one leg was enough. Um, apparently it was, though. I mean, it, it wasn't instant results, though. So I still feel like I was right about it. Not going short there. But the downtrend is a break and a new low. And then it goes into this little range here. We're inside of this bigger downtrend at this point. And then we get a break. And so we have downtrend break we're expecting prices to make a new low with this short-term uptrend here has a break new high so at this point we're expecting a new low the short-term uptrend has played out and then you just draw this stt here 
and it has STT right there, and then you get that lower high. So I think that that lower high doesn't look too bad. I, did, I didn't catch it in real time, but um, I mean, yeah, as long as you have room down to the range lows, obviously. Let me try 1.5 RR. So yeah, basically just a couple ticks higher than that would probably be good. I mean, to me, look at the context looks pretty good. The downtrend has a break. You're expecting a new low. The uptrend played out. You got a close out of the STT, got that lower high. I don't know if you would actually have the range at that point quite yet, though. Um, maybe. If you see those lows, think it looks like a range. I feel like... I feel like maybe it would just... If, let me type in 2 risk to reward. So, 1 to 2. I, I didn't take this trade, I just missed it, but... It doesn't look too bad. I mean, one reason that I would not want to go for 1 to 2, and I, honestly, I kind of did just miss this just now here, and I kind of am just realizing uh, this channel here it doesn't is not confirmed. It just has these two highs and then one, two lows. So it's an unconfirmed channel with an undershoot. So I don't think that 1 to 2 would be a good idea, especially if with that kind of support. So I, I definitely think it looks like a good area, but I'm gonna. I think my original analysis was a little bit better. One to one, one to one and a half, would probably be the best option. So, anyway, um, we push lower. We get a couple legs down. Price attempts to reverse. That fails heavily, making a new low for the bigger downtrend. So downtrend break, new low. Even though it didn't confirm, it clearly reacted off of it there. So I still think that it's making a new low for the downtrend and everything. And we make the new low. We have a second attempt lower. I don't, obviously, just because you get a new low doesn't mean instantly buy on the first bullish bar. I mean, you you got a downtrend in play here, and then it does close out, but actually it does not close out if you draw it as wide as possible. But even if it did, just because you get a break in a new low doesn't mean you reverse higher. I would want to see what I ended up taking, which is a rush back above and then a hold above the EMA. So I didn't want to just buy the first bull bar after the new low. You wait for the momentum to, to flip. So anyway, we will go into this uptrend here. I get it. And here I, I'm kind of disappointed in this trade a little bit because the uptrend has a break. We're expecting a new high. Yes. However, I really think I jumped the gun because one, I'm entering into the high and two, I see that it's a failed second entry when you do it by the tick, but usually whenever I take these kind of reversal patterns, I, I have an uptrend, break, and then first attempt higher, second attempt higher. I'm just entering on the first attempt higher from the uptrend break. And I, the way that I justified it, because I knew, I knew that it wasn't as good when I was taking it, but the way I justified it was, oh, it just made a trap on this very bearish bar. It just ticked lower, bounced right off the EMA, and just you know stopped everybody out right there. And then I still got in with a limit order. So I think that's kind of how I justified it. But I think I should have gone for a lower target maybe. I think maybe one to one because it's not the best looking reversal pattern. And it's like when it's this low, it's gone down this far. I, I, w I would want like a perfect reversal pattern. I kind of think I jumped the gun a little bit. I should have gone for a slightly less target. But um, either way, you know, it's still a good looking area. In the end, I'm glad I held out for the full trade, but um, I just kind of felt a little upset with it because it's just it's just the first attempt to the new high. But anyway, so we start to get this range. I don't remember exactly when I got it. I think I got it pretty soon after we this breakout here failed. I didn't see it as a failed breakout at the time. Um, it just took me a little bit to get it. But, um, but yeah, we go into this range here. The uptrend break, new high. You can kind of look at it as this wider uptrend, though. It just gets bigger with time. And then you get a break. First attempt higher, fails. Um, you just don't quite get any good shorts, I don't think. I mean, even if you got this in time, it's like I wouldn't want to take that lower high. I mean, that just, I mean, the EMA just rejected it, also making a double bottom. And then it's not really off of anything, it's just a lower high fading but you do have a break of this so it's like downtrend break expecting a new low but kind of like how I was saying here how when I had this this uh, uptrend 
uptrend break first attempt higher, and I was upset with myself for entering on the first attempt higher. This right here is also the same thing. It's just downtrend break, and it's just the first attempt lower. It's not like you're entering on the second attempt. And I, I justified it here with the trap, so I was like, oh, it's okay to enter on the first attempt. It's a trap. I was justifying it. There's not even a good-looking trap here, really. So, uh, I mean, if you think about it, there's only a good trap to the upside because it ticks lower than that red bar right there and stops, the, stops out the shorts. And I'm thinking about going short at this point, or I wasn't, but at, looking at it here, it's like I, I would be thinking to go short. So if there's not even a trap mixed with the fact that it's just the first attempt, it, that trade doesn't look like it's for me. So we go into this downtrend. We have a break. So downtrend, break. You can look at it as first attempt lower, second attempt lower, but that is very short term. Really, I think I, when I look at it, I see downtrend break, first attempt lower, second attempt lower. Obviously, you, didn't, you do need more price action to form before you can get that analysis, but on the short term, at first, you can see it's, you, know, you get the smaller attempts. And so, anyway, this short term uptrend here has a break, two attempts at a new high, makes a new high. Then we reverse, so you know, short term stuff is clearly in play here. So, anyway, after we know there's really no shorts here, even like this lower high right here, it's like the downtrend is in play, sure. And you rush below the EMA and now you're holding, but I, I get feel I, I get awkward in this, you know, in the right in the middle of the ranges, which had at this point I had the range drawn, but I, I, I just get awkward, you know, entering it directly in the middle of ranges. When it kind of seems like it's chopping, it couldn't reach the lows there, it couldn't reach the highs there. It's like, you know, it, either, either way, it is with the bias, the short, the I mean, the uh, the short bias, the downward bias. So you can say that, but I, I would just avoid it directly in the middle of the range, even though, you know. And b before you say, what about that, I just didn't have the range at the time. So, you know, it didn't bother me, but we got the leg down. We don't quite reach here. You would want to look for longs off these lows because it has been going sideways for a while and you can definitely still recover on the whole day but um where am i so we don't reach the lows but it goes up anyway and then here finally we're at the lows we can look for a long i did not think that this looks good here um it, it does have two legs down and it's off the it's off the lows but i mean it's just when you look at it it's just, it, it feels like, this, this feels like your signal bar, and then this is just closing way higher. Now, the context, when I look at it, it doesn't even look that bad. It's, you know, I, I can't even quite put my finger on it, to be honest, but I, I could just tell that it didn't look good. Like, you know, like, this is a pretty common thing to see when it just closes way higher up than the signal bar. Technically, it's on the same tick, so you can basically use either of them. But when you have bars like that, it just feels like you're buying really high. That often is the case. You're just buying really high. And so I just didn't want to take it. But um, and I'm sure that's the same reason a lot of y'all didn't take it. Because it's just like, that's just a common thing to see. You know, that type of, that just, that weird pattern where you get a small bar and then a way higher closing bar. And it's like, I don't really want to enter on this now. So anyway. Finally, we make the measured move, so we actually fully get down to the measured move. And then uh, I bought here, so I, I didn't. I was like, all right, here, I'll wait on a higher low, because I, I got a bigger channel in real time. I don't know why I put it back, but I had this, and I was like, okay, it's inside this channel. I just want to wait on a higher low. So I got a higher low, and it also was a trap, because there's, there's this bearish bar here. It ticks lower, then it ticks higher and traps them out, and then I entered with a stop and uh, then I got stopped out instantly. So I got stopped out really fast, lost five and a quarter points. It's just, and I, I when, when I entered, I was like, yeah, I see, I avoided it. I avoided it, now I'm taking the real entry, and then I got stopped out, and then as soon as I got stopped out, um, you get this bullish bar, and it actually gets a decent trade, so I was still entering too early there. Um, now, I think the reason could be that buying would have is just really bad in this situation even though because the way i justified buying was uh, we've been going sideways for a long time now but if you think about it after this downtrend played out we had this reversal you know but the reversal didn't last it ended up 
basically making a breakout pullback on the range. Not quite, but, you know, really just attempted to reverse, and then it failed, and I kind of just didn't really take that into account. So it's, I think it was good long here because it's a reversal area, but it's like once that didn't do so well and it's rushing back below, I really should have considered, you know, maybe buying overall is not a good option, which anyway, so that's why I took that loss. Um, I don't know why I just deleted that. Um, I don't know why I do that. But um, anyway... So I got stopped out, and then we ended up getting this bigger channel, which at first I had it more like this, but I ended up thinking that this fit pretty good, and then it basically held a third time there. So um, we get this push down. We have a break, new low, which let me draw that. It's downtrend, break, new low, and then we reverse into this uptrend here. And then this is where I got my next trade, and I posted it at the same time as a couple other people posted it. And... Uh, so yeah, I saw some people get this trade, so I'm happy to see that. We have this uptrend break, two, a, two legs to a new high. So the way I saw this was uptrend played out with two legs to a new high. And even if it didn't play out, because that's kind of cutting it close with that um, break, even if it's still in play, it has a big overshoot with enough room to get out before the other line, which that's what I'm saying. This is a bigger picture, so I would want to get out before the before price has to go through the other side of it. Unlike over here, where it's a very short term, I don't mind price going through it. So that's one thing to remember on overshoot trades. Now, since it had a break in and two legs to a new high, I basically, in my mind, knew that the trend was played out. So if I needed to go through the other side, I would have been okay with it. But assuming that this trend did not play out and it was just an overshoot, I would want room before the other trend line on a trend of this size. So anyway... And it's also a breakout pullback off these off this range. And the uptrend played out with these two legs up. Downtrend break, expecting a new low on a big picture. It's just a perfect big picture area. So, you know, I really like that trade. Let me get two legs down. So you can clearly see them there. First leg down. Break. Second leg down. Makes a new low and then reverses. Now, I don't think that there's any really any good shorts here. I don't think that's good because it rushed back above the EMA and offered no good setup. Then we do rush below. And now, we finally, we have the two legs down at this point. So I'd just be afraid of shorting this low into the two legs down and the low of the day. So no good shorts there. And then we were finally reverse. I don't think that going long would be a good idea at all at this point. So I don't see any good longs. I don't think that this reversal pattern is good or anything. And then we just go into this congestion right here. We get a leg up. Let me draw that. So if you draw it like that, you can see it has a break and a new high, but it, to me it just looks like one leg up. And I don't think that, that's over, that that overshoot is very much. I don't really think it's... It might not even be there. I mean, maybe. If I... See, so yeah, it does have an overshoot, but... Um, I just I don't think it looks very good. I mean, it just looks like one leg up. You know, you might have room for one-to-one, -one, but... You know, I'm not going to take a trade that's just one leg up for one-to-one. -one, you know what I mean? So, anyway. Then, finally, we just broke out. We go into this downtrend. Break, new low. We could reverse here. That's really it for the day. So, anyway, hope you all enjoyed this review. Hope you all learned something from it. And, yeah, I guess that's going to do it for the day. Um, I'll see you all.